and it's really lovely to be here. You're to be here to me. Thank you very much. It's really lovely to be here today. And the problem about inviting a lecturer to open something is that you're in danger of getting a lecture. So if you start glazing over and don't understand what I'm saying, wave, okay? I'm on the phone. Um, now, I guess the first thing uh, to say is, uh, Mary and I, I think we're of the same vintage. I saw your date of birth, I recognised it. Um, and maybe that's why we're both called Mary, because there's a surface of Mary's around uh, in the late 1950s, early 1960s in suburban Ireland. Because I think Mary and I are both products of suburbia. I'm just speaking to Tony before. Uh, Tony's from Walkinstown. I think Mary... She lives in Goats to India, and I'm from Mount Farnham originally, so we're all children of suburbia. And um, in a way, I suppose that's what brought myself and Mary together. I'm a sociologist, and with some colleagues at my university, we uh, began a study, or did a study a few years ago, of uh, Irish suburban life. And we picked four random suburbs. And what we were interested in was really looking at those as places where people live and trying to move beyond the stereotypes that we get on TV of things like desperate housewives, Wisteria Lane, American Beauty, and so on. Is, so we were really asking questions about suburbia. And when we came to publish our book last year, we wanted a really great image for the cover. And um, a colleague of mine, Mary Benson, another Mary, uh, told me about Mary, uh, Mary's work. And we picked an image from her, one of her other uh, sets of paintings, which are now going to tour of Tala. And uh, we use that on our cover. And I suppose that's what we both have in common, that we were trying to investigate what is life like in suburbia for people. And I think in the same way Mary is sort of excavating or engaging with the suburban landscape. Um, and I suppose when we think about suburbs, they're the places that people love to ridicule. And there's a great quote by a Guardian journalist where she said, the suburb is the mock Tudor home of the Bisto family, where Tupperware is king and shake and back is the drug of choice. And that kind of sums up a lot of the image of suburbs that you get in popular culture, in academia, in various places. Now one of the things that we found in our study was that people actually, we called our book Suburban Affiliations, we found that people are actually quite connected to each other in suburbia through networks, relationships, particularly through children, who act as a kind of point of contact, bringing parents and so on together. But underneath that kind of affiliation, there was this fantastic sense of place. And the suburbs that have the sense of place, of attachment, of a connectedness to the environment, were the ones that were most successful. And I think that what Mary is doing in her work, um, in this set of paintings, but also in the earlier ones, Suburban Shadows and Semi-Detached Reflections, is that she's excavating and giving a kind of a visual representation to us of our relationship to the places where many of us have come from. Because most of us now are going to live our lives or have lived our lives in an urban setting and actually most of us are suburban. And I think what Mary is doing is sort of peeling back the places that we all recognise and know where we live, the estates, the streets, the semi-detached houses. And she's sort of peeling back the memory, the tradition, uh, the places themselves. And I think it's a really important task to undertake. Because the kind of world that we live in now, we're always being told about, you know, time is compressed, there isn't enough of it. Uh, spaces are, uh, space is also compressed because it's so easy to get from A to B and to take, get on a plane and fly five hours and be somewhere else. And a lot of commentators worry that, if time and space no longer mean anything, does that mean the place is gone as well? Are we facing placelessness, right? The, just no sense of place. And I think that Mary's art is actually a response to the possibility of placelessness. And what she's doing here on the walls is revisiting the suburban home, drawing inspiration from our own family home, from the suburban street, from the interior and the exterior landscapes, and doing it obviously with an artist's eye. And she's kind of linking material things with imaginative, uh, her own kind of imaginative relationship with space and place, to produce these paintings that I think immediately arrest you when you look at them. Um, and I suppose what I think when I look at the painting is, paintings is that they all have sort of memory traces. 
They have traces of my memory of suburbia, of your life of growing up in suburbia, and of the lives of lots of us who have had that ex suburban experience. So when you look at them, you see shadows in the evening sky, you see the kind of light uh, that floods across a landing, or you see a little bit of greenery growing on brick, or just even the way in which nature and artifact is juxtaposed, like a lampshade uh, and a window, and then a little bit of um, a, a backdrop outside. And it kind of shows us how the natural environment and the built environment are always intertwined with each other. And it's together, the two of them together, that actually give us our sense of place. So it is the built environment, but it's also the natural environment. And if you think like a place like Tala, where we are now, Tala's sense of place is very much connected to the mountains as the backdrop, to the priory, the history and heritage of what Tala used to be, little country outpost when I was growing up in Rathfarnham. But it's also the built environment. It's this fantastic civic space with these amazing state-of-the-art public buildings that form an anchor for the community, the neighbourhood, the suburb that is Tala. And these paintings, I think, also take us back to the kind of worlds of our childhoods. Now, you probably look at me and think, well, it's a long time since that woman was a child, but I was one. And it takes us back to the estates that we grew up on, the boundaries that were, you know, where we socialised with our other friends and mates, the territorial markers that defined our place in suburbia, and the landscape where we felt totally at home. And that's why when I look at Mary's work, I just feel this kind of collective consciousness uh, connecting me back to my childhood in suburbia, and I think connecting to a lot of other people who had that experience. So I think that your work, Mary, is really infu infused with a lovely uh, sense of feeling, a sense of feeling about the nature of domestic space, in which many women spend many hours of their lives, and some men as well. Uh, the streetscapes of suburbia, the, the way in which the public and private hit off each other, and of course this lovely oscillation between light and dark. And I just think the colours, the colours themselves are fabulous, and hopefully they'll inspire you in producing your painting for the president. So in the times that we're living in, and we know that they're pretty challenging times, uh, Brian Cowan has resigned his leadership of Fianna Fáil just in the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> We're living in challenging times, but I think it, it's exactly in those times that we need people like Mary. We need artists and we need the arts to play, because they can play a fantastic role for us. They give us a visual language that enables us to engage with places, with our lives, with the present, with the past, to imagine futures. And I think um, the initiative that Tony was speaking about, Mary's sort of public art initiative, in which, you know, these paintings are going out onto a suburban trail uh, through Tala, that that has a very restorative role, if you like. It's allowing people, it's moving the art out into the community, engaging with the public, so that people in their own spaces, in the medical centre, in their private homes, in the schools, can reconnect with place, can sort of tune into those memory traces, uh, can think about the traditions of the places that they're currently in and the essential character of the suburban environment. And um, so for me, Mary's work with her really, really simple focus on the everyday beauty of the suburban landscape, it resists placelessness and restores a sense of place identity. And I thank you very much for that, Mary. On behalf of everybody that's here, I wish you success with Imagine Space. Thank you.